Hello and welcome to your most exciting sports program on TV, the Sports Profile here on KFM TV. I'm your host, Enoch Kofi Adadivo. My guest for today is a former Black Stars International here in Ghana. He's played for Accra Great Olympics as well as Accra Hearts of Vogue. He's also had stint with Lokomotiv Moscow in the Russian top flight. He's also played for El Etihad Tripoli in Libya. Do you know who I'm talking about? Wait for me after this break. <music> Welcome back from the break. You're still here on the Sports Profile here on KFM TV. I'm Enoch Kofi Adadivo. And just like I told you before the break, my guest is a former Black Stars International. And I know you're wondering who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the legendary Laie Kingston. Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you do? I'm keeping well, as you see. <laughs> it's always a privilege when I meet players who have always sacrificed their sweat, blood and tears. They've always put the country on their shoulders and then they show that, yes, we can also sacrifice our life for the nation. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. So how is life after football? Um, you know, from the beginning it was very difficult because you stay in a way from what you love most, something that you've done throughout your life, you know. But uh, I've not missed football much because uh, I've now taken on a coaching job. Uh, I bought a team uh, called Unique FC. So at the moment, I'm close to football. Try to uh, give uh, all the all the experience that I acquired throughout my career to the young ones coming. And the team is doing well. So uh, it, it doesn't make me miss football at all. But sometimes I miss being on the field and then uh, doing what I do most. So how is how is life as in growing up as a professional footballer? How is life? At um, it wasn't easy at all. It, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I was born and bred in uh, Buko, and it was very difficult coming out of that place. You know, as everyone knows, that the place is very tough. There are a lot of uh, aggressive people in the area. So, with if you go through all those things, that strengthens you in in life. But I thank God that uh, I put all my focus on football, uh, education a little. Uh, that's why I'm able to express myself or even read the contracts that uh, I've signed throughout my career. Uh, so first of all, I would advise everybody who wanted to play football to the professional level to at least uh, get a little education. Even though Bukom is, everyone knows that it's very difficult for people to attend schools. I manage, my parents did not allow me to stay at home. They tried to push me to get to the, uh, a little bit in the, education level. Uh, coming to football, it wasn't easy. As I said earlier on that, uh, it was very difficult, uh, but it's something that I chose to do in, future, in in my career. So I put everything in it, 110% in everything I do, and uh, God listened to my prayers. I uh, made it to the top. So I thank God for whatever I did in uh, football. So you grew up by your parents, your parents who brought you up? Yeah, especially my mom. Uh, my dad have uh, five wives with 21 kids, so uh, all the children stayed with their mothers until until I was 16 before I moved to my dad's new home. Myself, Oli Lee Kingston, and then other siblings that uh, uh, I have. But we all grew up uh, under our mother. Are you the firstborn, second, or third? Which one? I'm the thirdborn. I mean, from my mom's side, I'm the third born. My dad's side, um, six, six born from my dad's side. So with um, Richard King, is it same mother, same father? No, we have um, one father, but different mothers. Um, my mom is from Jamestown, and uh, her mom is from Nongwa. So did you play school team during your school days? Oh yeah, sure. Um, during my younger age, you know, I, I every school that I attend to, I'm one of the best players in the in the in the school. And then sometimes, you know, uh, uh, other schools try to come and hire me to play for their schools from from dif different districts. So it's something that uh, 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 I was playing that time. I was in Colts football, and then sometimes I go play for schools as well. Uh, when I got to the secondary level, I went to I attended the uh, Mass Business Secondary School, 
we 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 qualified to represent Greater Accra in the regionals, which uh, was played in uh, Kumasi, and we did very well. We we were runners up of the tournament. Uh, I was best player of the tournament as well. It was a very good uh, moment. And then through that time, that's where I was discovered from to 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 play to the highest level. So during that time, did you play as a winger? I'm a typical midfield player, number six, number eight. But where is your favorite position? Which one is your favorite? Number eight. Number eight is I, your favorite. I like to be on the ball most. So uh, from my childhood days, I prefer staying in the middle and then uh, leaking between uh, the defense and then the, the attack. Uh, me, me pushing to the right side. I moved to the right side when I got to the senior national team. So growing up, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Uh, the first thing was uh, football boots. Because I quite remember playing with my bare feet uh, when I was playing for me and you babies. And other teams, other players will be using boots, football boots. There is one uh, football boot that is called uh, Muntaki Polo. Uh, at least, who, who, have a, who doesn't have a boot at all have that boot? But with me, I play with my bare feet. And I remember my coach at that time, Coach Johnny, is no more. Um, when there is 50-50 ball and I run from the ball because the guy is coming with a boot and coming aggressive, when I run, he will come on the pitch, excuse the referee, pull me out, and then whip me with cane. Then ask me to go back on the field. So through these things, I think it made me very strong. So did your parents or any of your parents prevented you from playing football or maybe to pursue a different course? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, both parents, uh, my mom and my dad, they, they prevented me from playing because uh, my dad was a former footballer, uh, played for Arts of Oak, moved to Olympics, played in the national team as well. Uh, it's called uh, Emmanuela J. Kingston. And so um, it was... It was very difficult from them. They, they, my mom keeps telling me that uh, my dad played football. He, he did not get anything from it. So he asked all of us to... Actually, all my, 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 my brothers played football. They are very good on the ball, but it's only me, myself, and Olili made it to the top. But almost all of them are very good with football. So my mom was against it. He doesn't want me to play, but I love the game. Sometimes I would sneak out and go... And play and when my dad comes and hear about it i'm in trouble uh, because of that i don't like staying close to my dad because he's very strict he always try to monitor our movements but I, that's why i like staying with my mom my mom i will go and play but he will always tell me she will always tell me come home when you finish football so with that how does that make you feel uh, when 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 they they preventing you from doing what you love most definitely you, you you feel bad, you know. So I always try to do good things at home so that when they get to football, my mom will allow me to go. Whenever I misbehave at home, she always tell me, no, no football for you. And with that, I can't. So I always try to put up a good behavior. So aside your mom, do you have anybody who also encourage you to pursue the football in job? Um, I, I will always say that uh, I was motivated by my, my, my friends that I play around with. Because in my area, I, I love challenges. In my area, every young boy that comes up and he wanted to play good for, he start to play good football, they always compare me to him. So with all these challenges, it gives me motivation that, oh, I have to work hard and play better than uh, this player. The, the, uh, mentioning names, there is one player that started, he's called Abi. He played to uh, just to Nanya FC. He was a very good player, and there have been argument between me, myself, and Abi. And within six to seven months, I made sure I'm on top. And then I finished him. There is another player, Amwikwe. He as for Amwikwe, he played to the highest level. He played to the Premier League, local Premier. He played for Olympics and other clubs as well. And then there is another one to Olute. There are a lot of players that comes up, and it's always. Competition. Uh, Gordina Trump too was there, you see, and then uh, Stephen Appiah too. So all these 
players are very good. So those players motivate me to try and get to the top. So your first top flight team was Accra Great Olympics, right? Your first top flight team? Yeah, my first Premier League team was Accra Great Olympics. I was spotted from coach, uh, uh, myself and Godwin Atram. But before, before joining Olympics, out of all came to sign us. They came to Winneba, we were in the National Under 15. They came to Winneba, then uh, bring us down to Accra to sign for us. But when we came, I told Atram, Art of Folk is a big team, they have big players. We have, we have more opportunity with Olympics than us. So I advised him that we should go to Olympics instead of... Because at that time, the two teams were fighting over us. And uh, I think it, it helped because we went to Olympics and we had playing time. That's when we had our chance to play in the National Under-17, the Under-20s. How many seasons was it with Accra Great Olympics? How many seasons? Um, from 2005, I stayed with Olympics from 2005 to... No, 1995 to... 19, sorry, 1995 to 2000. To, 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 yeah, to 2000. 99 to 2000. Stayed with Accra Great Olympics. Then uh, Olympics moved transferred me to uh, Libya. It wasn't successful. The LATH Tripoli. Yeah, LATH Tripoli. Yeah. It was very difficult. Uh, they did not fulfill their contract. So I have to come down and then pursue my... When I got down, it was very difficult. I have to stay one year without football because my ITC, ITC was there. I couldn't play. So uh, uh, that time, Arts of Folk was interested. I joined us. So Arts asked me to stay for one year before they issue me a provisional uh, certificate to play again. So in um, Great Olympics, who were some of your teammates? You did mention of Godwin Atram. Then... Uh, I have a, I met a, um, Godwin Atram. I, I came to the with Godwin Atram. And we advised Adekoka to bring in Dan Kwe, Awule Kwe Jr., Aziz Ansan, Christopher Pelete, um, Oseb Wati, and Nia Yamond. See, so all these young boys were, we, 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 we advised Adikuka to bring them to join us because we were all in the national under 15 with, with, with them. So when you walk through the, um, the tunnel and then you see fans filled at Accra Sports Stadium, how, how is the feeling like? You know, I'm a type of person that uh, I, I love playing under a crowd. You know, when I see the crowd, I go crazy because uh, uh, me, I, I believe, I always tell my players that uh, football is entertainment. So when you're going to play football and the, the, the seats are empty, I don't feel good. So I always like full spectators on the pitch. When the, I see fans on the, uh, at the stadium, I always wanted to give more because I feel... I have to entertain them. But if it's empty seats, I don't feel comfortable. So I love to see fans on the pitch when I'm playing. And after a defeat, how is the feeling like in the dressing room? Oh, it's normal. It's not normal because, uh, sorry, it's not normal because uh, no one goes to war and thinking he's going to be defeated. But uh, uh, it has to be very short. After the game, 90 minutes, whatever happens, you take it. But make sure when you're on the pitch, you give 110 percent with that when you lose a game and you 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 felt that oh you've given your all but yet you've lost i think that's the most great feeling that i always have i've lost the game but i know that i work hard even in trainings i work 100 percent in training after the training i feel good so uh, losing a game is not good but it depends on how you approach the game and uh, if you've given 110 percent and how was life in Libya, playing for LATR Tripoli? How was life? It was very difficult. I, don't, I, I really don't want to talk about that because I went through a lot. It's, it's just by God's grace that's uh, how I made it down to Accra because it was, it was difficult. I stayed six months without salary and the apartment they gave me, they gave it out to. They brought in uh, another Libyan players who is staying, who is from another city to stay with me. I see nothing, not even one dollar. 
<laughs> yeah, she, so so it's, it was very difficult. But I thank God for my ca playing career. And then who was your agent at that time? Uh, I didn't go there through agent. Uh, it was a uh, Meteos Olympic team tournament in Libya. And I was selected, I was with the under 20s, I was selected to be with the Meteos. And I uh, had a very good tournament. So after the tournament, Coach Oti was a Oti Akente was, was our coach. After the tournament, the team came to Oti Akente and that, oh, they want to sign me. So Oti told them, okay, you let me take him home. If you really want him, make an arrangement and come and get him. And then they, they came down. After one week, they came down, they did everything with Adigoko Olympics. And then he transferred me and I went. I saw the contract, everything was in it, black and white, but I got there and the only money they give me is $5,000 and that's it. Wow. Just $5,000 down payment and that's it. I didn't receive anything, you see, but it's all good. Yeah. And then coming back to play for Accra, um, Hearts of Folk, uh, tell us more about life in Accra. So. Uh, you know, I always give thumb up to arts people and uh, uh, that's why arts, Arts was already close to my heart until they did that to me, you know, because I came down from Libya. I went to, to, to Olympics and I told them the problems I had and they told me, no, they can't do anything to get my ITC back to pursue my career. And uh, uh, Nia Ibote heard that I'm in town. He called me to start training with us. I went to training once, twice. And then uh, Ernest Thompson, he was their lawyer at that time. Uh, called me to his office, put everything down, and then sent uh, uh, the case to FIFA. So FIFA wrote to us back that oh, I have to stay one year without football. Then after one year, they can issue a new, GFA can issue a new ITC for me. So they asked me, I said, oh, I will stay. But they told me, okay, we're not going to sign the contract with you, but we will pay you till you start playing for us. You see, so they gave me salary and winning bonuses. Apart from the Champions League money that they won, that I did not get some because I, I was, if my ITC was in LA, I would have been with the 64 Battalion squad to win that trophy. But I was training with them that time because of my ITC, I was training with them. But the, I was getting paid, which I don't believe any other team can do that. So uh, with that alone that they did, I, I, I respect them so much. And it's something that uh, I cannot pay them back. But with time, I know with my uh, coaching career I'm pursuing now, I want to bring us to the limelight again as a coach. All right, so we're still speaking to a former Black Stars International, of course, Lai Kinsin. Um, this is a sports profile here on KFM TV. We take a break, and when we come back, we continue our exclusive interview here on the sports profile on KFM TV. <music> Welcome back from the break. And if you just joined in, you are here on the Sports Profile here on KFM TV, speaking exclusively to the legendary Lai Kingston. Lai, uh, tell us more about life in Scotland, where you played for Hearts. One who asked which of the Hearts? Is it Hearts in Accra or Focus? What's the, what's the real name for the, for the Hearts team? Hearts of Medlothian. Hearts of Medlothian. You have been there, so you know how to pronounce it very So let's look at life there. Tell us more about that. Oh, it was uh, a country that I felt at home throughout my international career. You know, because I, I went to, um, after Libya, I went to Israel, it was okay. And then uh, from Israel, I went to Russia. Russia. Motiv Moscow. Yeah, I played uh, three teams in Russia for a period of four years. Uh, the, my first team there was Krylia Sovetov. Stayed with them and then uh, moved to Terek Grozny. Then uh, my final team was uh, Lokomotiv Moscow. Uh, it was very good. I really enjoyed my, my football. I was growing that, at that time. I was maturing in the game at that time. So I really enjoyed But the country that I enjoyed my game and enjoyed the country uh, was Scotland. I felt at home. My kids were happy. My wife was okay, comfortable. And myself, I, I really enjoyed playing there and then uh, stay there as well. And in Tel Aviv, which is um, Israel, um, what, what were some of the 
um, the religions there. Christianity, there's Christianity in there, and then what other religion? Yeah, there is Christianity and then the Jews, Jews as well. And Israel. Did you have anybody who was trying to lure you to the Jewish culture? No, no, no. They, they respect everyone's distinction. We even have uh, Muslims in Israel, you know, but they respect uh, uh, each other religion. So during your stay in Europe, any racial discrimination? Oh, yeah, I met it when uh, it was a lot in Russia. And Russia was was crazy, you know. But uh, in all, you know, you always have to think of where you're coming from and uh, focus on the job that you, you are doing. So uh, it's, it's very difficult, you know. I had uh, Sule Muntari's problem. It was very difficult, you know. We all have experienced those things. I remember in Locomotive, I finished a game going to my car and my own fan came close to the car and he was calling me monkey. He called me, hey, Kingston, guilt. Guilt, he thought guilt means monkey in the Russian language. But he thought I did not understand. So I turned and looked at him. But my, I was with my agent at that time and my agent walked to him and then he, 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 I think he told him something and then he calmed down. So, uh, uh, and then again, uh, against uh, locomotive against uh, Zenith St. Petersburg. Uh, uh, before warm-up, they peeled banana called me through the banana to me on the pitch. But uh, it was very difficult there. But, you know, it's something that we should not encourage in, 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 in sports in general. So with that, how does that make you feel in general? Aside being a player, how does that make you feel as a person? You know, if you're not strong, you, 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 you feel very down, you know. I, anytime it happens, I feel very down. One time in, in the supermarket, I went for a grocery shopping and then the old woman, approached me, held my hand, and then rubbed his palm in, on my skin, and then looking at his, you know, so it, was, it, was, it, it wasn't easy at all. It was very difficult in Russia. So that, does it affect your games when you are playing on the pitch? Does it affect you in a kind of way? Yeah, sure, sure. Just imagine you're on the pitch and uh, Zenith and Petersburg fans keep making monkey sounds for 90 minutes. Definitely, if you are not strong, you will just break up. Monkey sounds. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And like you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's something that is there. It's something that we should not encourage in, in, in not only football, but sports in general. And the weather there, the first time going to it's, Europe, it's, the weather. The weather is very, very harsh. Very harsh. When you get to winter, it, even in summer, it's more harsh. It's more hot, hotter than Ghana. Very, very hot. But in winter, too, very, very cold than anywhere else. Do you have, unless South Pole. See, but it's, it was very difficult in, the, in winter. Did you, ever, did you ever cross your mind that, oh, the weather is too much, let me come back home? Um, no, no, no. But the first time when I got there, I, I got there spring, when the cold is there, but it's not that. So I was there till summer and then uh, I met the winter so my body got used to it a little bit but hey even the Russians they are not used to the, the cold so uh, it's not easy I remember playing the game I came down for holidays and for six weeks my fingers are still numb wow. yeah my fingers are still numb so it was very difficult but especially when you're on the field it's easy but when you're sitting on the bench it's... Now what do you... yeah it's crazy it's crazy <laughs> But all the same, you know, uh, we, we're still alive and kicking. And then life playing for the under-17 team of Ghana, which year was that? For under 1997. 97, we, we played the African Cup in Bo Botswana. And we were third place. Runners, third place. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the World Cup, we were runners-up to Brazil in Egypt, 1997. And then uh, the under-20 was Ghana, 99. We were champions. We beat Nigeria in the final. I scored the only goal. You can see, that's the moment. That was the moment. I'm there. I scored against Nigeria, the final, the final yeah. against Nigeria. I scored the only goal. And that was the celebration. So yeah. with, with that one act, so what was the, the reason behind your, your, your rasta, your, <laughs> your trademark? Um, you know, when, as you grow, you know, as you grow and people get used to 
you with a look. You know, you always try to... Because football, you have 22 players on the pitch. So you need something that someone, if someone is watching on the TV, you will recognize you very early. So that's why, and my wife told me, the dreadlocks looks good on me, so I should stick to it. So that's when, and she was the one twisting and dying and doing all the styles for me that time. So I think that's what, why I stick to that to, throughout the rest of my, my career. So playing for the under 17 team of Ghana, did you have the feeling that one day you're going to represent Ghana, or I mean playing for the Black Stars one day? Oh yeah, that was my, my, my target. That was my target, especially. I, I targeted I target the, the under 17s first, because I was watching uh, 91, and 93, knew that Atlantis and all those people. And so those people, were in court, that I was playing for coats and the 14s. So those days, I, I had a feeling, I had the, 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 the aim that one day I have to be there so that people or my parents will watch me live from another country. So that was the motivation. That was my target. And after I played the under 17, so far as you, got, you get to the under 17 and national team, when you play well, in the under seven, definitely you can go through the ranks. Yeah. The under twenty, the meteors, and it depends on the player, your seriousness, and everything. It it, it wasn't easy to go through the national teams. I Me, mean, I always say I graduated through the national teams. Like I'm going to a, a, a university, you know, because under seventeen in ninety nine, under twenty, uh, under seventeen in ninety seven, under twenty ninety nine. And then the Olympic team, 99, 2000. And then I stayed till four years till because I was trying to target the European career. So from 2005, that was when I, I got called up to the senior national team. And talking about that, um, you played for the Blasters in 2005, just like you said. Um, and then your first Cup of Nations was in 2006. Proud to the tournament, how was preparations like? Yeah, the important thing is qualification because you have to qualify before you get to the tournament. Uh, I remember joining the Black Stars, we, we were fifth on the table. We played two games, we had like one point, I think. It was very difficult, it's not easy at all. But the crop of players that I met were very determined, you know, and I was lucky to be part of that squad because we love each other. You know, myself, Essien, Muntari, uh, Stephen Apia, my brother Richard, Jomesa, me just mention Samwajan, you know, and Bafojan, you know, Adoke Papo. You know, we have a very good squad, and Sedu Sape, you know, very good squad, and we love each other, you know. So, uh, being among them was very easy for me, you know, very, very easy for me. And we worked very hard in trainings and then in, in the games. So that's why we got the opportunity to qualify the, the country to the first ever World Cup, you know. Uh, in the Nations Cup, it wasn't easy. It's, it's the most important tournament in Africa. Yes. You know, it's very, very difficult. You know, every player wanted to be there, you know. We were unlucky. We got out through the group stages. Yeah. But that time, we've qualified to the World Cup already, you know. So, but I was unlucky to go to the World Cup. We'll, 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 we'll come to that in detail. But prior to the tournament, was there any pressure on you going to represent your country at the Nations Cup? Oh, no, no. There is no pressure at all because uh, uh, I've played other youth tournaments. So I see that as a normal tournament as well because I've grown. You know, I've gone through the ranks. So and I, I realized that I've reached that stage. So I find it as, as normal. In the, the, during the tournament, I think your first match was against Nigeria, Nigeria. where the Blasters yes. lost by a long goal to know. Yeah. That free kick, tight house free kick, was your brother, was he not prepared before the free kick was taken? No, it was Samir Jay. Samir Jay instead. Yeah. Was he not prepared before the free kick was taken? Because you guys were on the pitch. Yeah, he, he, was, he, he wasn't ready. He was trying to arrange the wall, and then Tai Tao was so smart enough to have the shot. Uh, a referee can stop it and let him take it again. Another one too can let it go, you know. Because he wasn't ready, he was talking to arrange the wall and then Tai Tao was smart and then hit the ball. But all the same, me, I don't like making excuses, you know. We've lost 
that game and then that's it. And then the next game was against um, Senegal. Senegal, where you won by a long goal to know, by Matthew. Matthew so after that defeat, I, I, I gave him that that, that, that throw pass yeah. and went to, to and then find the there. So after losing to um, Nigeria in the first game, playing a team like Senegal, did you have a feeling that you were going to win that match? Oh yeah, because uh, you know every tournament, every every team would like to win their first game, you know. So, and Ghana Nigeria, we all know that Ghana Nigeria is always war. It, it, it can be just split, like a little mistake, other team will be punished and all that. So we know that we made a mistake and we got punished. But our aim is to win all the three, three, three games in the group, you know. But we managed to beat Senegal, which I had my suspension. That's what caused me the World Cup, you know. You, you, <laughs> that means you missed the game against Zimbabwe. Yeah, did you the game against Zimbabwe? I was banned for four games. I was banned for four games against Senegal. Was uh, I think was this Senegalese player? You, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was uh, a tackle from Boba Diop on Steven Apia. So all the players got there to talk to each other, like we all should calm down and all that. So I didn't see Abibai. He came from my blind side and then gave me a blow. So I went straight down, you know. But the referee did not see anything. But the referee said, stimulation. I went down too easy. So, so he came in, he gave him a red card, and then he gave me a red card with four games suspension. So, Then talking up about the Zimbabwe game as well, where you lost by uh, two goals to one, was it complacency on the part of the Blasters? Maybe they thought they beat Senegal, so Zimbabwe was a team to beat easily. Was it complacency? Yeah, I think that's what cost us because the approach to the game itself. And one thing that cost us was, you know, we traveled from our base to, I think, Alexandra. To, yeah, so we shift hotel and then the mentality of the players and the approach to the game because they thought it's Zimbabwe, you know. So I think that's what cost us in the, against the Zimbabwe team. And, and that time to our strength wasn't 100% because we lost some key players, myself, and I remember Yakub Abar Kari too was injured or suspended sometime. And Steve Yapi, our main captain too, is having injury, playing through injuries and, and, and all that. So I think that game caused by complacency and then unlucky with injuries. Some, there were many who also said the jersey the Blasters put on was a funeral attack. <laughs> Me, I don't believe in those things, you know. It was black, black. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in Jesse's or I don't know. They, if you really work hard towards something, you achieve it. You know, it's all hard work. May I believe in that? I believe in Supposing that. the blasters put on their normal white, would that, would that have been a different but, result? But, but but we've we've put on a normal white, white, and we've lost yes. games. So, me, I don't believe in those things. So after the. African Cup in 2006, where Ghana failed to qualify from their group stages, and then you missed Ghana's first World Cup in 2006 in Germany. How did you feel? Uh, it's, it's one of the worst moments. One of them, oh, the second one is, it's <laughs> you know, one of the worst moments I ever experienced in my career. You know, it's something that uh, you've worked hard for, and that's the there's a, there's something that you've worked for that you have to enjoy later. And then later on, they deny you from enjoying it. It's, it's very difficult, but, you know, uh, it's all good. You know, sometimes you never know. If, if I'm part of that squad to the World Cup, you never know what will happen. I, I will not be sitting here by now, you know. So anything that happens, you give thanks to the Almighty. You know, God knows best, you know. Maybe it's, it's a blessing in disguise. So I leave it. For, but it's, it's players aim or... Players um, uh, uh, wish to be in that major, major tournament. Every player in the world will want to be in, in, in the World Cup. So it's something that I, I, I can't forget it. And after that, two years later, Ghana hosted a Cup of Nations here in our own homeland. Um, you played in the first game as well? Yeah, I played first game. Second game, I played in the fair opening game. And then second game. Uh, I got two yellow cards, so I missed the third game, and then um, and then the quarterfinals. I came back. Uh, I was yeah. I played in the quarterfinals. I was injured. I I got injured through 
the uh, training section, then came back in the quarterfinals, came on in the second half, played, and then um, and we beat them 4 2. Yeah. You know, so uh, that squad, um, um, that time every coach was on top, they have good a solid team. squad, good yeah. players, and that, but we managed to beat them as well. So I, tr I truly miss that squad. Is there an extra feeling when we are hosting a tournament? Uh, yeah, because you are playing home and the uh, fans is, are always on your side. So uh, you, you need to let the fans enjoy. So you try and give 110%. And what about pressure-wise? Is there an extra pressure? Yeah, there is pressure. You know, pressure can make you and break you. It depends on you, the person. You know, I love pressure. So when there is pressure on me, that's when I try to please people. So when you compare your playing days, playing for Accra Hearts of Fogel, then playing against Kumasi and Santi Kotoko, then you compare recent players, uh, do you think there is that excitement? Um, at the moment, you know, not only me, a lot of people are complaining, you know, we don't have uh, that thing anymore, you know. Fans have lost interest in going to watch their teams. You know, I sit back and then realize that, notice that uh, the problem is uh, the play, the tactical discipline of the teams, you know. You go to the stadium and you don't see the shape of this team, you don't see the shape of that team. If this team have the ball, how they have to move. The other team have the ball, how they have to, they have to move. If they don't have, how they, they should move. You don't see those things. So I think that's what is taking out the the beauty uh, of the of the game. So for me, uh, when you go on the streets, you have quality, good players. But it depends on the coaches that will try to put them well on the pitch and try to impact good football when you have and you don't have into them and you see a beautiful football in the country talking about beautiful football we'll take a beautiful break and then when we come back we continue our exclusive interview with former black stars winger Lai kingston here on the sports profile on kfm tv Welcome back from the break, and if you just join in, you are here on the Sports Profile here on KFM TV. My name is Enoch Kofi Adadivo. My guest is no other than Lai Kingston. We're looking at his life during um, a professional footballer as well. I know you're wondering what all these honest are doing here. He'll be telling me about that pretty shortly. So, Lai, this honest here, tell us more about it. This one, uh, this one, for instance, is uh, you know. It's a present from uh, uh, when you look at it, it says Ayeko, like it's the star of Gamashi Ayeko. Yeah, the chiefs of Gamashi they honor me with uh, this trophy that uh, I've done very well in whatever uh, I did in football. And uh, this one here too is a, it's a player of the year. In Scotland, you know, fans player of the year in Scotland. So when you received this award, how did you make, how did you make you feel like? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 a great honor, you know, uh, leaving your country yeah. to go to other country and taking uh, a player of the year award. I think is the best feeling you 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 ever 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 have. Oh, okay. this you know, one, this this one is Happy Father's Day. Like yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of uh, the the guys too at Jamestown, you know, uh, guys that like I grew up with, you know. When I was in Europe, I tried to support most of them. So one day I was at home, and then they came with this uh, trophy. Yeah. I was very pleased. You look at this one also. This uh, was goal of the season <laughs> for Hearts in Scotland. In Scotland, yeah, and you goal can see it's it's written uh, uh, Saint. Art versus Saint Mirren. You know? It's a fantastic goal. It's a, a free kick goal. Uh, you remember the goal that. Um, um, is it Rashford? It's called Manchester, Manchester United, United Rashford. Rashford. Yeah. Similar goal. It's, it's on uh, YouTube. It's on YouTube. When you, when you 
Yeah. Like instantly, you see this. Yours, same. Yours oh, it's 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 nice. Both both, like both, both are nice. It's the same. <laughs> very very nice go. <laughs> This one, this one too this is, one is uh, very yeah, very, very heavy. It's the same player, player of the season again. You know, player of the season again. During the time with? With Art of Medlothian again. You know? and then this is a medal that I got from uh, um, uh, 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 when I was very young, youth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Money to keep it. Munchendi. Yeah. We yeah. came with Yeah. This one, they, it was given to me in Oshu. Yeah. The, the last but not the least. Um, this one here, <laughs> I think you pick a wrong thing. That's my son's award. Oh, okay. In in Scotland, our youth, their youth uh, team, he was their oh, man your, of the your, your son my plays. Son, yeah. oh, okay. It's now with my, my team now. And as of folk is interested in signing him. Because we played a friendly game with them. And they really wanted to sign him. He's 19 years now. And he's playing fantastic football. Talking about that, so how many kids are we talking about here? How many kids you yeah, I have? I have four, four kids. I have uh, three boys and a girl. I have a boy. First one is Jacob Kingston. Second one, Gerald Kingston. And then the third one is Beyonce Kingston. And then the last one is Clinton Scott Kingston. And then your name of your, your mistress. The name of your mistress. <laughs> Diana, Diana Kingston. I, we'll, we'll let our viewers know that she's a very beautiful woman. I've, I, I saw her. I, I saw her. Oh, really? I saw her. Really? When? I, I saw her. When? Oh, you know now. <laughs> and when you came to the shop, eh? I saw. So, um, is Mr. Kingston looking forward to pursue a coaching career, a coaching job one day? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it's something that I wanted to do now. In fact, I'm, I'm waiting for the date to come up so that I'll start pursuing my coaching badges. But at the moment, I'm taking on a unique FC team, uh, which we're preparing. It's a second division team. We're preparing to the new season now. The boys are playing very well. They listen to instructions, and uh, I'm happy with the boys. After the appointment of um, Coach Kwesi Api as a new coach of the Black Stars, there has been a lot of speculation around saying your brother, um, Richard Kinsey, is likely to become the next goalkeeper's trainer of the Black Stars. Is it true or is it just rumors? Yeah, uh, there is 99% truth about it because uh, I spoke to Richard myself and uh, he's happy to take that job, you know, because uh, he's at home now, but he tried to bring in uh, a lot of goalkeepers to his house and try to, 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 to coach them to be better than what he's doing. He loved, he loved football and he wanted to be close to football too. So I think giving him the Black Stars job is, is not going to be a mistake at all. It's, I think it will, it will help the national team goalkeepers a lot. His presence too around the uh, current players too will help because a lot of players look up to him. You know, they respect him a lot. Him and then Steven Appiah as well. So with me, um, uh, I will support uh, them getting the job because one, the important thing is Ghanaians are not happy with the senior national team now. But one thing we should remember is Olili have, still have his fans. People still love him. Uh, Steven Apia, people still love him. So with these two players, and then Kwesi Apia as well. Kwesi Apia played well with the Black Stars, played well in, with Kotoko as well. So he, he also have his fans around. So with these three people around the Black Stars, I think fans will love to come and watch them with the boys. So I think it's a very great move. Is there any special relationship between you and, and Steven Apia? Oh yeah, Steven is someone that I grew up with. You know, he's born in uh, Choco and I was born in uh, Buko. But we played together, you know. But just that all the time he goes to play for a different team and I'll be in a, in a different team. He was with um, Fatah babies and I was with uh, uh, Kowloon babies but it's always a comp there is always a competition between myself and, and him throughout but we are very very close or after football we are very close we do everything together till now you see so I think that's the secret of our success in the national team because when you look at it I'm on the right he's close to me and then ACN and Muntari too they are very close to each other you know so that's why uh, that time most of the big coaches in the world said, Ghana have the best midfield in, in, at that time. 
Is Mr. Lai looking forward to coach the Blasters one day? Yeah, sure. That's my that's my target. My target is to uh, 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 be a coach for the senior national team. Uh, I don't want to be rushing. Uh, I want to take it little by little, you know. But, but at the moment, my target is to get my coaching badges. And then my target, the important target is to get a class of folk job. It's very, very important. It's very close to my heart. I want to get a class of folk and bring the, 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 the light back to the, to the team, you know. I think Arts of Folk deserve better. Deserve better. And talking about that, the last time they won the league was in 2009. Yeah, so, so they deserve better. They are a very good side, a big team. So they need someone that can try and build the team again to the top again. So that's, that's my main target at the moment. Then the senior national teams, I want to graduate from the under 17 to 20s to Olympic team and then the senior national team because I feel we need we need a philosophy from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top. The starlets have to play the same football that the 20s will play, the Meteors will play and the senior national team will play. With that, it's to be easy for the senior, senior national teams. The moment you get to the senior national team, you've, you already know the philosophy already, so it will be easy. That's what Germans are doing. So that's the idea I want to bring in. I'm talking about Spain as well. The ticket, the ticket taka football. Taka football. So their youth food teams play the same way the senior team plays. So it's easy when you promote a player from the youth to the senior team. It's easy for him to 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 adapt. So after a hard and a stressful day, what do you do during like your leisure time? My leisure time here, I stay here, stay here, watch football with friends, you know, relax with friends. That's all I do. Your favorite team in the world? I have two teams. I have two teams in the world. I have Real Madrid and then Chelsea. Wow. Yeah. And Chelsea is on the verge of winning the Premier League title. Let's say, yes, they've oh, won, they the, will. They, they they've won, won the title. Let's say they they've won. won the title already. <laughs> <laughs> they will. They All right. Will. So, your last word to individuals who are aspiring to be like you someday? The only thing I will tell them is hard work. They should keep working hard till. Because I remember. One of my agents told me, Kingston, when you stop running, the money stop coming. You see, so they should work hard anytime they are playing on the field and then off the field. And then the other thing too, they should try and get a little education background so that other players that had problems by not be able to read contracts before signing or even express themselves, it will not happen to them. So. Uh, uh, I thank them all for supporting me and uh, they should look forward uh, for me coming back to be a coach again. All right. Thanks for your time. Thanks for everything. Thanks for the, your, your service, your hospitality and everything. And I should say, you have a beautiful apartment as well. <laughs> and I don't understand why we call you. Sure. You, you, you are on our invitation. Sure. So, that's how we draw down the curtains on today's episode of the Sports Profile here on KFM TV. I always tell you, for the most exclusive interview, it's always here on KFM TV. My name remains Eno Kofi. I that what say when you say a prayer for yourself, say one for your brother. Till we meet, it's au revoir mes amis. And I'll be too.